Try and do a wrap up here for uh, Garb August and Summer of Trek, although I might be reading some more Trek tonight. It's 8.31, the last day of August. Farewell to August. Farewell to Garb August. Our Garb August. Farewell to Garbage. Reading, in a way. Um, I should probably split these up because this is really, these are really Star Trek books. Oh no, they're not. Wait a minute. I read three books. Now I can buy books. And I guess I'll go through that as I go through them. Okay, so the prompt for the fourth week of Garb August, the last week, is to read movie novelizations or uh, read books that were adapted into a television series in either the 70s or the 80s. Did I get that right? And I, I looked through a few different novelizations. I considered reading the Ghostbusters novelizations. I've always wanted to read those. I hear they're pretty good. They come in a two-volume set. Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. Under Kindle Unlimited, you can get... Uh, you, can for, you can download Dawn of the Dead, which has George Romero's name on the cover. I don't know how much writing he did or if it's just adapted from a screenplay or maybe he wrote the whole thing. I really couldn't see myself reading any zombie fiction at this point, even though I love Dawn of the Dead. So what I came up with is... I'm going to... These aren't really novelizations, but maybe these books wouldn't have been written if it weren't for the movies. And by that, I mean these are James Bond continuation novels. I went down a rabbit hole of Bond Tube... Uh, I, you know, occasionally I make a mistake of clicking on a YouTube channel that is not a booktube channel, and then, of course, my whole uh, feed immediately con converts to whatever the theme of that video was. I'll try and um, remember to link to this guy's channel, but there's a guy who does a lot of uh, a lot of reviews of Bond material. He did a whole run of the John Gardner continuation novels. Bond continuation novels are novels that were written after uh, Ian Fleming died. Uh, the first one was written by Kingsley Amis, a great book called Colonel Sun, which I read a long time ago when I was reading the regular Bond novels. And I've read a few others as time goes by. The, um, I read in the Pierce Brosnan era, there was a guy who wrote, I think he wrote about nine or ten of them, called, oh geez, can't remember his name right now, it just went out of my head. Uh, Raymond Benson, an American. His first Bond novel was written in 90, or was published in 97. It's called Zero Minus uh, Ten. Good book, very good book. He's an American. Did I just say that? Uh, his books are pretty good. They kind of meld um, the Pierce Brosnan era movie Bond with the traditional print. Bond, they're set, they're contemporary novels, um, which is how it was done up until recently. Now they started doing historical novels. The most recent series that I liked quite a bit was the Anthony Horowitz novels, three novels starting with Trigger Mortis. They're the best, they're the best Bond novels since, since Ian Fleming, in my opinion. Probably better than Ian Fleming bit better writer but you know you gotta you gotta hand it to the original anyway so what I read was uh, so after after Ian Fleming died the the publisher planned to do a uh, continuation series under the name the pen name Robert Markham I think it was it was going to be different writers doing each ones the only one that got printed though was Kingsley Amos's book Colonel Sun which is really good he obviously worked really hard to to approximate the style and the feel of James Bond, of a James Bond novel. Um, you know, it picks up pretty close after the end of The Man with the Golden Gun in the same era as that book was published. Uh, then there was a book that came out called The uh, Biography of James Bond, I think, which was a fictional biography of the character by a guy who actually wrote a Ian Fleming biography, I think. Then there was a gap, and then they decided to do a continuing series, an updated series, 
starting in the 80s, and they tapped this guy named John Gardner to do it. I'm looking for the covers here. Uh, he did about 14 of them, and I never read them. I, I didn't hear much about them. He, and this is going to be a theme throughout this, this video of people who take on a project and just are dying and just have to let you know, have to let the public know how, how little regard they have for the product. The product. So he wasn't really a, an Ian Fleming fan. You know, he just wanted people to know he took it for the money. Uh, so he changed quite a bit. But watching the video, uh, the videos on the Bond tube videos of people who've read these books and stuff, I found a really good one who recommended three of the 14 novels. And one of them just sounded so crazy that I thought it would really fit well with, with Garbagas. It's, I believe it's the seventh one. It's this one by John Gardner. Never Send Flowers. You know, and this is the, the ebook cover. This is, you know, how they make covers these days where they just, you know, it's all text-based, little thumbnails so that all you really see, the most important thing, James Bond. You know, no room for any illustration or anything like that. This is how they appeared in... When they first came out, these are this is probably the American edition. John Gardner was a he had his own espionage series, probably a little more realistic than James Bond. Uh, the reason I picked this one is it sounded absolutely bonkers. James Bond goes to Euro Disney, although in all the reviews I see it, uh, it described as Disneyland. It's not Disneyland; it's Euro Disney in Paris to save. Princess Di and her two sons, her two young sons, at this at the point, because these are contemporary written, from an assassination plot by a horrible supervillain. Oh, I wish I could remember his name. It's pretty. It's pretty good villain name. Um, I'll probably never find it now. Balroid or something like that. Who's who's a who's a Lawrence Olivier type actor considered the the greatest stage actor in Great Britain after Lawrence Olivier, but he becomes a supervillain for some reason, and he wants to uh, kidnap Lady Diana, who does not appear in the novel, except, you know, as, as to convey to MI6 that she's not going to be intimidated by any terrorist threats, and she is taking her kids to Disney World. At least that's how it was all described as me. They don't get to Disney World. Any of this Euro Disney stuff doesn't, doesn't come into play until the very end of the novel, 86% in the Kindle version of my read. Um, and I cannot recommend John Gardner at all if you're a James Bond fan. He really... There's a character in this book called James Bond. There's a character called M. There's a character called Money Penny. They bear no relation that I can tell to any other version of the characters. There's really no humor, as ridiculous as the plot is. It's really played straight. Um, you know, James Bond has no style. There's no, there's, there's a, there's a mystery. There's a crime plot. I mean, there's a suspense, espionage plot of a sort, but there's nothing. There's not, there's none of the James Bond world building. There's no. You know, James Bond is, is much about, uh, as much it is about science, science, pseudo sci-fi, action plots or Cold War. Spy plots, it's as much about travel and and uh, fashion, men's fashion, and like expensive watches and cars and cool gadgets and all that kind of stuff plays into it too. And you could just tell John Gardner disdains all that stuff, and he just you know, hurry to get back to his own character. He uh, he wrote these books on three book contracts. He kept signing a new contract till he written fourteen books. You know, each time saying, well, I'm not going to write anymore after that. You know, there's really nothing more I can do. But then, you know, of course, he would need money. So I can't really recommend uh, this book, even for its silly plot, which I thought would fit nicely with Garbagas, James Bond in Disney, at Euro Disney. It doesn't really uh, work out. I will never read another John Gardner book. I'm probably almost certain. But while I was looking for that, I found a more recent one. I thought I'd give it a shot because... And I think it was... Oh, no, I got it from the library, so I didn't pay for this one either. Uh, very timely. Uh, 
book it was just written. It's only about 100 pages. It was a special uh, coronation edition for, uh, you know, written much like Zero Minus Ten, the, the, the book, I, the Raymond Benson book I, I mentioned I read long ago, which was about the, the handover of Hong Kong as its background, handover of Hong Kong from Great Britain to China in the late 90s. This other book I read is called On His Majesty's Secret Service, uh, which is which marks two uh, milestones. One, it came out on the 60th anniversary of the novel On Her Majesty's Secret Service, which is a pretty good novel and, pro- and still, to my mind, the best James Bond film, which is not a high high bar. Let's face it. I mean, the good the good films, the best James Bond films are uh, From Russia with Love, Goldfinger, On Her Majesty's Secret Service. I'll throw in uh, Moon, uh, The Spy Who Loved Me, of course, and then I'll throw in Moonraker and Casino Royale, and that's really about it. I mean, uh, the others are not good, in my opinion. But, um, but you know, I always go to see them, so it really doesn't matter, I guess. Okay, so what I read was called On His Majesty's Secret Service. It was about 100 pages long. Uh, it's got an even duller title, so I don't know why I'm bothering to to show it to you. Well, this isn't something... You know, this is this is the title for it, On His Majesty's... So it's about... The, it's leading up to the coronation of, of Charles III, which I wouldn't have known he was the third unless I'd read this book. I just know King Charles. I'm sure there was others, but Charles III, King of Great Britain, was for a little known fact, he for many years was the Prince of Wales, but now he's the king of everybody. Um, and has cancer. Hope he gets better. So, you know, two days... Two days of the coronation, and can 007 save King Charles? Well, he's King Charles, never really in danger. The plot is about the plot is like ripped from the headlines, by which I mean is ripped from the author's Twitter feed. Charles Higson, Charlie Higson, sorry, he's a he's a P- British people who who are watching this might might know him. Apparently, he's a comedian, an actor, he's all kinds of things. He wrote a series of Young Bond novels. There was a Young Bond series. He wrote the first five or six, and somebody else wrote some others, which are historical novels, meaning they're 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 about James Bond at school in Eton in his childhood when he's twelve or thirteen or something, which puts him in the nineteen twenties because uh, you know the first Casino Royale came out in what fifty late mid 50s something like that so this you know backdates it so those are the first ones but I'll never read them because I, I hate that kind of thing I hate retconning you know with the exception of Superboy I would say uh, which is fine because I grew up on that when they do things like when they do like think Roger Zemeckis or somebody one of those Spielberg light kind of directors in the 80s did Young Sherlock Holmes and, like, yeah, it's a stupid idea. It's always irritated me when they do that. There was a young Spencer novel once. They only did one, Robert Parker's character, Spencer, Spencer for Hire. And they tried to do a young Spencer, and that lasted one book in the 80s. So obviously that didn't sell very well. But sometimes they'll they'll gimmick up, you know, some publisher will get the idea to gimmick up a, a, an existing character and do uh, a young, a teen version of it. It just seems like a cash grab to me. Um, I did like the young, the TV show, The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, though. I think it only ran a season or two back in the eighty or nineties. I enjoyed that when I when I would catch it randomly. That was kind of cool because it had uh, two different actors playing Indiana Jones. One at about age twelve or thirteen, something like that, and one at age seventeen or eighteen or whatever. And they would alternate stories back and forth, and they were all set in the thirties. You know, adventure stories set in the set before World War Two, as as were the first two Indiana Jones movies. Um, so this, so this guy that he, this guy who wrote this. The special jubilee, I, I keep wanting to call it jubilee, but I guess it's not a jubilee. Charles Higson, this is his first adult James Bond novel. 
it's an exception to how things are being done now where most of the recent continuation novels are set in the time frame they would as the original Ian F Fleming novels which puts them in the 50s and 60s this is of course set in 2022 or whenever he was coronated and it's James Bond versus the incels it's there's some uh, the villain is a guy who's got who's sort of this this uh, supreme uh, neo-fascist uh, nationalist who wants to destroy the United Kingdom, uh, you know, make an independent England, take it back to the era of King Alfred or something, or before that, and he's riled up all these incels online, all these, all these, uh, all these, um, you know, online creeps who... Uh, and and there's a lot of references to um, you know what, what's going on in online discourse and stuff. It's a little too too topical almost to be even fun. It was just a little, like anxiety driven because there's just like so much racism, so much nationalism, so much of that kind of stuff going on. But it was at least it was a James Bond story. Um, you know, it's really not escapist because it's really just really hitting hard on the fact that that uh, how politically divisive everything is today and it's um, but he's he understands James Bond much better he obviously does not hate the character of James Bond like John Gardner did you know so there's cool stuff in there James Bond's cool he has an interesting relationship with Money Penny Money the the plot uh, starts off with a another double O agent getting killed. How many times have you heard that beginning? It's double O nine is assassinated. Turns out he was in a relationship with Money Penny. She she was about to resign and marry him. So there's a personal stake that J James Bond wants to avenge the murder of the, of his fellow agent, who especially was important to Money Penny. And M sounds like M. He's in. You know he's he's a pompous ass like M is and and it it was good that you know there's cars they go places the cars are described the actions described the clothing described the meals are described the travel is described so Charles Higson knows how to write James Bond but I'm still not going to read those kids novels just because I'm opposed to them uh, on principle okay so that wraps up Garbagas for me. Uh, and I still haven't spent any money, as far as I know, because I got both those from the library. Those James Bond, those John Gardner novels, are no hold list on those at my library, that's for sure. And and on his on his Majesty's Secret Service, I'd never even heard of until today, until I happened to see it, you know, when I was searching for stuff online. Not even any, any of those other videos or anything about Bond, and there's. Online, there's an exhaustive amount of YouTube videos of Bond this, Bond that, Bond everything. So I was really surprised I hadn't heard of this at all. But it hasn't been out that long, so... So along with that, I was able to... I started doing some... I did a little more Star Trek stuff. Um, as I said in my last video, I... was able to buy books and there was a book I wanted to buy uh, which wasn't available and actually this is long enough I'll talk about that in another video because I can wrap up uh, Star Trek next and I'll have a little postscript about Garbagas but that's probably enough for this video.